So now that we've determined it's episode 51, <laughs> do you want to kick it off? <laughs> G'day everyone, uh, we have a lot of catching up to do. So we're going to be talking today about BSX, Track Attack, Shepparton Victorian State Series and a um, big pro field they've got coming up there in a week. Um, some new Chase bikes and carbon frames that Gary's got in. Uh, product review with the Mongoose Title Elite, um, the Sam Willoughby track opening profile freewheel uh, for 2022. There's been some modifications, uh, job at District Cycles, getting started in BMX racing and uh, I can't read your writing. Whole Shot Cycles. Whole Shot Cycles has gone live. Ah, so. okay. So there's a lot to catch up on. We'll see you in a bit. G'day. He's Gary. And he's Shane. And you're watching ECI TV. You certainly are. Enjoy. Okay, welcome back after a bit of a Christmas break. It's, it's a good little break, wasn't it? Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> had a nice relaxing time and uh, it seems like ages since we've been together and had a chance to film, but... Uh, but yeah, it was a well-deserved uh, rest from both of us, and uh, yeah, had a bit of fun over Christmas. We did get together briefly at BSX. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was part sure. of part of the Christmas break. I came back early from the holidays just for your BSX. <laughs> oh, it was a great day, though. Everyone's BSX. Yeah, everyone's BSX. And then there, uh, as part of the, well, not really part of the Track Attack series, but during the Track Attack series, which was another busy period. The um, BSX is always enjoyable. Mm. It was a great day. You turned on an awesome event, and with all your helpers and everything like that, it was a credit to everyone. Uh, yeah, it was good to get a whole lot of help for that one. We did have all sorts of troubles leading into it. You know, a track like uh, that being all dirt needed water, and we um, rely heavily on a bore pump, which packed it in um, nicely about two or three weeks before BSX, which was around Christmas time. And obviously, no one was open, and no one had supply, and um, so I think we dropped that bore pump in maybe days before BSX, Jeez. just in time. <laughs> These are all the things beyond the scene that no one realises. Because you even had a bit of a, a septic or sullage or something oh. issue leading up to that as well, which yeah. had half your backyard dug up. And uh, yeah, so people just don't see the man hours that go into, <laughs> into it. They just see the event and think, oh, this is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, but there was a lot of people that said they enjoyed it and came up and thanked me afterwards. But it's not just me, obviously. There's a... Um, Small, hard-working crew, obviously. Big thanks to um, people like Andrew, um, Glenn. Um, who else was there? Oh, we it's, had... it's a trouble when you start listing yeah. it. Because you, you know you're going to forget someone. I mean, there's a lot of people that help on the day, but there's a whole lot of people that help um, yeah. before and, and you know, after it. Um, obviously, Paul Knox was able to help us quite a bit until he hurt himself. Um, there's a new guy, Ruben, who comes and helps quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, there's... A lot of people are helping in the lead up to the event. Um, yeah, you had quite a few new faces for the event as well. Um, Mike Daly from Kickass BMX oh, was yeah. there. Yeah, he hadn't been before. No, nah. and so yeah, I did see there was a few new faces floating around, but yeah. And the weather was kind here this time. It was. It wasn't scorching hot and it wasn't peeing rain like it often mm. does, but um, you know, it was good. So um, on the day, I think we've raised. Just over five hundred, no, five hundred, five thousand dollars already. Um, but we do have a couple of frames left over that we're going to try and get rid of. Um, we did try to auction them; they didn't go in auction, so I might put them up for sale on um, Facebook Marketplace. I think to to clear those out. And okay, uh, is there a way that? So that's how you're going to look at moving them on Facebook unless, Marketplace. Unless you got a better idea. Hmm. I'll let you think about that one. I don't know, think about it, but yeah, too good an opportunity just to limit to somewhere like Marketplace. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So there we go. All right, um, so that was fun. Um, I'm just trying to think of the winners. Oh, this, this year um, we had um, a new female winner, um, Co Cody Stagg. Okay, yeah. Um, and um, Emerald Blythe, who's won a couple, I think, now, um, had to sit in the sidelines and watch, and I did hear her say it was a favourite event for the year, and she was kicking herself that she couldn't ride, but still recovering from her elbow injury. Um, and the men's win winner, um, there was actually quite a um, action-packed field, wasn't it? Well, it certainly was. It was really good to watch. Um, for Max Cairns to qualify third, and um, he crashed out oh, in his semi-final quite down so heavily. Hard. I know we've got um, a bit of footage of that, so I don't know whether we might better just pop that in. But yeah, that we'll was try. a very, uh, a very hard off for for Max, and uh, it was quite funny actually because 
he went down so hard it looked like he was going to you know injure himself quite a bit and i saw him um, not long after he, he sat down and he was sitting there just staring the space and, <laughs> and i thought oh, are you okay mate i thought you know you'd done quite an injury he said i'm just sitting here waiting for it to start hurting he goes it's not hurting enough for the for the for the crash he's waiting for the adrenaline and everything to calm down and all of a sudden so he was actually just almost in a trance just waiting for the pain to kick in um but it didn't fortunately so yeah, he was very lucky yeah i was surprised he, um, he was hooking wasn't he? Was oh gotcha yeah, yeah um so josh jolly went head to head and josh jolly is like last year's winner he went head to head with um um Bodhi Turner and Bodhi took it out again so it's Bodhi's second win at BSX. Yeah. Um, so it was very exciting. If you wanted to you can go back and watch the full live stream that we had running on YouTube um, on the bmxultra.com account or you can head over to, now I don't remember what this was, Fat Old and Bald. Um, did, did that could be the name, for, name of Esther. <laughs> oh, it's already, get, get it's already taken. <laughs> that old. <laughs> <laughs> it's already taken. Um, so Ali Scott did some coverage for us, and it was pretty cool the way he did it. Have you seen that? Old and bored, and never heard of it. Oh, okay. okay. I have to shoot you the link. Yeah. No, I haven't. No. <laughs> Now, um, I did try to get along to Track Attack to do some interviews. I was pretty keen to get down to Knox for the final round, but I managed to hurt myself the day before, and I wasn't up for walking or driving or anything when That's it came... a bit of a nasty injury <laughs> you ended up with. Well, I'm, I'm pretty lucky, you know. I was at full speed and um, front wheel washed out while jumping, and I fell quite away, and um, Ripley and my wife were there, and they were like, uh, I think we'll just stay at home from now on. You only seem to crash when we came in here. <laughs> But I just lost a little bit of skin. I was lucky to have uh, Glenn there with me, and he had, um, it was fresh off a first aid course. So lucky, uh, yeah, it was pretty messy. But uh, so it was mainly just your two knees that knees took the brunt of it, and an elbow, and my shoulder and my chest. Oh, is that all? Okay. I, <laughs> so your little toe on your left foot was okay. No, that's got arthritis <laughs> from a previous crash. <laughs> Um, so unfortunately we didn't get down to track attack, but it did look like quite a successful event and um, had quite a few people, um, a lot of interstaters this year um, compared to last year. Yep. Um, so I'm disappointed I didn't get there, but I'll definitely try to get there to next year's event at least. Yeah, I didn't get to any of them either, but the reports that I've heard is uh, it was a fantastic run event and everyone enjoyed it. It was quite hot. Uh, for a few of them, I believe, wasn't it? From memory? Um, oh, always is. Yeah, it is that time of year. Yeah. But yeah, it was a yeah, great event. Um, I did hear that Park Orchards had to run two rounds yep. of track attack. Um, yeah, it took um, one of Casey's. Yeah. That's right, and I believe Casey's getting some work done, so hopefully they'll be back in the lineup next year. Yep. Um, so, with some more racing, we've got um, Shepparton coming up in a week. Yeah, next weekend, Shepard and uh, first round of the state series for Victoria, and a um, very, very popular track. So we've been talking to a few pros this morning, and there's uh, quite a few coming down and across for it. So it seems like it's going to be very well supported. They've put up a reasonable amount of money for the boys, uh, 750 plus 75% payback. Um, I, I had... Um, Ryan asked me during the week, what's 75% payback? What does that mean? <laughs> and you don't realise that <clears throat> that was quite a, a common thing back in the day and you haven't seen much of it recently. And so basically, correct me if I'm wrong, the the prior, the, um, the entry fees that the pros put in, 75% of that gets put back into the prize pool, yeah. which means that... Um, that, you know, the more that ride, the bigger the prize pool and the more opportunity to win some money. So I know back in the day, you know, going back 20 years or whatever, that, um, you know, a lot of the events were X amount plus payback or just a payback event or whatever. So the, the more supported it is, the bigger the prize pool. And um, so it's the first time I've seen this for a while. Is, yeah, you seen yeah. It? No, I haven't no. seen it much lately either. So they've, they've put a, you know, a, a base of $750 plus 75% of the entry fees puts back gets put back into the prize pool so it could be quite a bit of money well yeah it's it's not gonna you know make someone rich no. or anything but um we should still see some great racing i did hear that isaac kennedy's coming down to hit up the supercross track prior to going across to the states and racing at rock hill so um yeah. it'll be good to see you know victoria's best go up against quite a few interstaters yeah definitely no, it'll be a good event so that's that's just on the sunday yes yeah, yeah. so uh yeah, we'll see how we go. We might travel up there and have a bit of a squeeze. 
shoot yeah. a couple of uh, few clips here and there and um, maybe cover it. I might even help you on the camera this time. No, that's fine. <laughs> well, you won't be racing. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> will your knees handle it? Oh, my knees will. I think my heart muscle might uh, oh, okay. get strained or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be good. Hopefully the weather holds out. Um, Shepparton can be hit and miss. It can be very hot. can be very windy. Can be very wet, so um, but then that's pretty well anywhere in Victoria. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully you can if someone, you know, sort of we all get an opportunity to get up there and have a bit of fun. Yeah. Hmm. And so you got some new chase bikes. Yeah, we've had a couple of uh, containers of bikes come in, and um, fortunately or unfortunately, they've pretty well all gone out. So um, a lot of the shops, I've seen a fair few advertising them on social media that they've got them lined up in their stores. So get around to your local store and check out the new range of chase bikes. The uh, elements came in probably two weeks ago. Uh, the edges came in last week. And um, so yeah, majority of stores would have received their stock now. The, they're a great race bike straight out of the box. The edges this year, um, come disc brake, which is pretty cool for a, a fairly entry level, entry to mid level sort of bike. So they're um, cable operated disc brake. But yeah, it's some good colour schemes. And, You're not going to yeah. ask me to pick that pen up, are you? No. Not, not in I'll, camera? I'll drop the soap. <laughs> <laughs> so, is, is, there much, is there much difference between last year's models and this year's models? I don't know the mainly, graphics. Yeah, mainly with the edge bikes that they've gone to um, all seal componentry and um, disc brake. Whereas um, that's a first for the edge bikes. The elements ha haven't changed a great deal. The graphics and everything are obviously um, different. They come in a, uh, a slate or a sand um, colour range. But yeah, all colour color matched with the, the um, Answer Dagger forks and uh, uh, Envy rims and everything like that. So they, um, yeah, they look, they chase, spend a lot of time on their um, design. Uh, we, as in ECI, have to order these almost sight unseen, but we've got the confidence to know that they're going to be good looking no matter what. Um, Chase do a fantastic job of their design. So, yeah, we didn't see these as we ordered them, but when they did turn up, we were quite impressed, as always. You've got a few balance bikes in amongst all yeah, that? Yeah, that's added to the range, the balance bikes. It's the edge range. Um, so we've got a balance bike in the edge range and also a Pro Double XL. Uh, oh, right. which is a new addition for the 2022 models. Uh, the elements, the top of the range ones, still just go from Expert XL to Cruiser. So so the edges that I've seen just as walking in, they don't have that little gusset in front of the seat mast anymore, do they? No, oh, I don't, don't get into detail like that. I've, <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, unloaded a container and I've shipped them out. I'm, we've hardly had a chance to build one and, and check it out fully. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let you um, jump on yeah, the website and have a look. We'll, we'll, yeah, and we'll pop some images up so you can work that out for yourself. <laughs> um, along with the bikes, we've got some um, Chase carbon frames finally back in stock. So we've got a, a fairly good range of those. They've, they've turned up. So check out the website and go into your local dealer and hit them up for one of the new carbon ACT 1.0. Two frames. Do you still have the matching icon forks for Certainly those? Certainly do. Yeah, no, nah, matching colourways. So, um, yeah, you can make it look pretty schmick. So, over the Christmas break, I managed to kick off some more product reviews. It's been a while since I've really got into it and I'm um, starting to enjoy it. So, we kicked that off with a Mongoose Title Elite. Um, it's a bike that's been around for a couple of years now, but we finally managed to get our hands on it thanks to the guys at PSI. Um, so I took it for a bit of a ride and it was a little bit of a small setup for me so I gave it to Paul being a lot shorter it was a longer frame for him but you know the cranks and the handlebars were all the right lengths and everything yep. so um, thoroughly enjoyed that it was a, it was a really good um, sort of mid-level um, complete bike with a um, quite a good frame that you could sort of you know upgrade your parts and, and you wouldn't need to update update your frame. The frame was gonna carry you right through to, you know, pro riders on the um, elite circuit, you know, World Cup and that level are using these exact same okay. frames. So perfect. So it's quite good. So if you're interested in that, check that out at bmxultra.com and go to the reviews section. So um, something that was really exciting but it was just poor timing for us was the opening of the Sam Willoughby 
uh, Supercross track over in South Australia for the f um, opening of the Australian National Series. And, you know, any other time we would have gone to Adelaide, but um, with the National Series starting so early in the year, we just couldn't do it. That was probably oh, for two of dodge, us. Dodged a bullet, really. <laughs> I mean, we always, we, we take any opportunity we can go to go across to Adelaide because it is reasonably close mm -hmm. and a, a good run for us, so we do enjoy going over there. But yeah, we're so close to Track Attack and BSX and Christmas holidays and everything like that that we decided not to venture across the border. And um, yeah, I think we did dodge a bullet. Yeah, so the track looked amazing. Um, seeing people's videos and photos made me think, maybe I'm just gonna jump on a plane and do some videoing. Yep. Um, and then reality kicked in. I thought I got too much to do. Um, and then starting to watch the um, live feed on Saturday, there was rain. Oh. Sunday, there was rain. I was talking to some of the riders and, you know, you couldn't pedal. You couldn't go as hard into the corners um, because you'd wash out. Mm. Um, you couldn't pedal out of the corners. So it was really um, made for interesting racing and saw quite a few spills. Did you end up seeing any of the live oh, feed? Yeah, I did watch a bit of it. And um, it, you feel real sorry for the um, track developers and every, the organisers and everything like that because to host a, a major event like that, as soon as a, a track's finished, you can get, get by with it. Um, but not when the weather turns against you. I mean, that's going to test any track mm. or any any um, track builder because it'll just chew it up uh, real bad. And unfortunately, that's what happened. So I think you're going to have a, a little bit of an interview with someone in regards to that just to get a, a full story on the, the whole incident. Yeah, so hopefully after this, I'll head over and catch up with um, David Gosling from All Tracks Australia. They did a lot of the um, track build, um, not so much the surface, but um, <clears throat> from what I understand is the surface was never completed and they were going to go back and finish that off after yeah. the event. Yeah. Um, so so looking forward space. to that. Yeah, yeah, so there'll be a separate interview. Yep. Um, other than that, that track looks amazing and oh, I can't wait facility. to get over there and have a ride. Oh, once it's all settled in and finished and everything, that's a phenomenal f um, facility. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to have the attraction that yeah, you know, Shepherd and Sleeman's and everything's got for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's very lucky for the South Australian crowd who um, finally have themselves a supercross track without having to travel across borders to get to one. Yeah, definitely. Um, I noticed over the Christmas break that Profile have a 2022 version of their free wheel. Yeah, well, the um, free wheel's been super popular for quite uh, for a couple of years and then they sort of dropped off the face of the earth for 12 months and, and we had trouble trying to get any stock and all of a sudden the, um, they became available and yeah they've been modified to um, you know a few tweaks here and there and um, I think we're out of stock of them again now but that's only because you know we, we had uh, a bit of an influx of people wanting them as soon as we had them in stock and um, but yeah just a, a new modified profile freewheel there's even um, I noticed Profile's putting up, I think it's Tech Thursdays or something like that, where they show a little bit of the manufacturing. And last week was um, machining out the ratchet ring and housing for the for the um, for the Profile free wheel. So it's good to have a quick look at that. But yeah, so they're back back available again. So the biggest difference between <coughs> the uh, first gen and second gen is there's um, six poles versus yep. the original one, which had four poles. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, I went down and um, visited uh, Brett at District Cycles, <coughs> and um, they've got a pretty big setup down there. You haven't been there. I haven't yet. been there yet. I must get down and look. Um, so pretty amazing store. They're um, really big on their BMX. Um, Brett is a mid school racer um, who was pretty handy back in the day, um, up amongst the elite level riders. I remember having to race him quite a bit, actually. I think we're in the same moto at um, Melbourne World Championships. Oh, <coughs> um, the glass house. So we go, yeah, yeah. So we go back quite a way, but um, they've got a job opening there as a warehouse um, person. Okay. Um, so if you're interested in getting involved in the BMX industry and um, you're in the Pakenham area, which is I think where they are, um, get on to District Cycle Store. I think it is, mm -hmm. and um, ask for Brett, and he'll be able to give you all the details. Or check it, check out the website. I believe it's on the website as well. Mm. So I um, started to find more and more time for writing stuff on Ultra. 
<coughs> and I did write an article about getting started in BMX race, and it was very, um, uh, I don't know if you got to see it at all, it was very um, basic, point by point, with a whole bunch of links, because um, it seemed to me that over the December, January, um, people had started developing a bit of interest in BMX racing, so um, I had quite a few people asking me, you know, about transponders and how to enter and where results were and all that sort of stuff. So I figured I'd do one that's very Australian based, so um, hopefully it helps people from around the place um, get started or help somebody else that might be wanting to get started. Um, so go over and check that out at bmxultra.com. Great idea. It's good, good to revisit the grassroots every now and then, and just uh, yeah, just sure. publish something like that. It, it's interesting, you know, <clears throat> when people want to get involved in BMX, they have a look at, um, say, Oz Cycling, and just can't find BMX yeah. specific content. So, I figured if I pulled all those links together, um, I'd be helping at least one person. And we do get into the situation <clears throat> where you move along with BMX racing in a ring, you just sort of presume everyone knows mm. the majority of stuff, and it's not until you get asked to. A question and think seriously you don't know that and you can't find that information that it's a good idea to revisit and, and list that sort of stuff because yeah even similar to what we spoke about with the 75% payback at the Shepparton event you know that's something that like, like I said we've known about for years and years and it's just but then someone says what's payback and you think oh of course there's certain things that you just take for granted yeah so yeah. it's good to you know revisit that and put up some basics even um uh, a friend of mine, Ruben, who's getting started in BMX, he um, came along to Northern yesterday, but he had no idea that um, even for a club race, there was a cut-off time to enter, yeah. which was 4.30 and at 4.45, and he thought, oh, yeah, I might get down there, he couldn't enter. So, mm. I mean, the clubs are um, generally quite good, and you can get in touch with them and ask them if you could slip an entry in for a club event, because they're happy to have more people come along and try. Um, yeah. But when it comes to an open event or something like that, you know, it's just one of those things that if people didn't know the entries were closing so soon and they miss out, there's no, you have to wait to the next event. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so our friend Dane, who we've had on the show a few times, has opened up um, Whole Shot Cycles over in Sunbury. Um, so his website's gone live and um, got a lot of good suppliers, ECI. Um, who else was there? Crash Test Dummies, so C2D Industries, um, and a few others. So Dane Designs. Dane Designs. Oh, yeah, his own <laughs> products. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a very easy to use website. I went and had a look at it um, when Dane told me it was ready to go live, and um, it looks like he's done a good job. And um, I believe we'll be adding more and more products. So head over to Whole Shot Cycles. Um, you might need to find a link and we can put that up on the screen because um, apparently Google hasn't found it yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually another bike shop opening very soon too. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, BMX, BMX Life. Life. Yeah, That's so right. I was talking to Julian just recently. Um, he's, I've got some chase bikes here ready to go into his store and I believe him and Zave will be opening possibly in about a week. Oh, right. Maybe a week and a half, two weeks. Um, they've just taken their time um, shop fitting, making sure everything's 100% correct rather than opening the shop and then trying to adjust as they go along. So they're just taking their time to open their store, which is in Richmond, Victoria. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's going to be a little boutique type store covering BMX, all forms of BMX, hence the name BMX Life. And um, yeah, I believe the boys will do a fantastic job out of Julian and Zave. Both have a big, big history in BMX, um, both freestyle and race. And um, yeah, they really know their stuff. Yeah. And they're, they're well known throughout the industry. And um, yeah, if anyone can make a go of it, those two will. So yeah, that should be opening very soon, BMX Life. So uh, yeah, watch his space. Why do they have a website? I'll have to get onto Julian and see. I don't think they do at the moment. I did have a look the other day, but I. Look, maybe they're waiting to open the store and launch a site and everything all in one hit. Yeah. And hopefully I haven't taken it away from them, that, that, you know, the, the announcement and everything. But I believe it is, last I spoke to Julian, it's about a week and a half, two weeks off. So I hope they've registered the domain name and business name so we don't get squatters jumping yeah. in on them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll make a quick phone call off before you edit this and put it live. <laughs> But yeah, no, a couple of guys well known in the industry and um, yeah, they're going to give it a crack. Awesome. Well, that's, uh, that's the show. 
That's about it. Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to say that's it in a nutshell or anything like that. Stupid things. But, uh, but yeah, that's the show. Um, good to kick off 2022 um, with episode 51. I believe this year is going to be a very big year for BMX. So um, watch your space because I know I've said that a few times already during the show. So, um, but yeah. We'll be trying to cover as much as we can uh, with a very big year coming up. Mm. Um, overseas travel, interstate travel, everything seems to be opening up. So BMX is opening up. So hopefully we can get to a few events and run a few interviews and cover a few races. All right. Well, thanks for joining us and we'll catch you in a couple of weeks. Cheers, everyone. Stay safe out there. See ya. <laughs>